Hey friend, thanks for popping in. I got a great scripture for you today. I want to give you Joel 2.25. Today as I'm recording, it's February 25th, 2.25. I'm giving you Joel 2.25, which says, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. Everybody says amen. But And that's where most of the time, that's where most of the time we stop reading. But I want to finish the verse. A lot of people read this passage out of context and they miss out on so much because of it. He says, I will pay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the swarming locusts. I was just looking at it in the NASB, which is a more of a literal version than the one I, uh, I had memorized this one in years ago. It says, I'll make up for you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the creeping locusts, the stripping locusts, the gnawing locusts. How many ways has your uh, harvest been stolen from you? How many dreams have you pursued, got just within reach, and then had them ripped out of your hands? How many times have you thought you were going to get the breakthrough, and then somehow it was stolen from you? Some form or type of locust devoured your harvest. Listen, to me. it happens to all of us in our lives, but what I want to point out is the last part of this verse where God says, my great army that I sent among you. What? Listen, you say, what? who's talking? It's God speaking. I'm going to repay you for the years, the locusts have eaten, the big ones, the little ones, the gnawing, the this. And then he says, my great army that I sent among you. I want to tell you something, friend. If you have sin in your life, you're a Christian, saved, love Jesus on your way to heaven. But if you have sin and compromise in your life, the way the Israelites did at this time, God, God is the one who sends the locusts. Many Christians think that the devil is their biggest problem. I want you to know, if you've got compromise in your life, if you've got habitual sin in your life, Satan's not your biggest problem. God is your biggest problem. Satan might not even be opposing you. If you are already doing what he wants you to do, he might just leave you alone. God is the one who opposes those who are living in sin and compromise. And the people of Israel, they God wanted them to realize some of the stuff that you've been facing, the stuff that was robbing your harvest for all of these years, you need to know it wasn't the devil. It was me. I was the one who stood in the way of you getting your harvest. Why? Because I will not let you win without me. I will not let you win if you're living in compromise and sin. And so I sent locusts and I sent them for years. But here's the promise. If you read Joel chapter 2, the beginning, you find out that the people's hearts are turning. They've called a fast. It says uh, they came with fasting and weeping and mourning. I'm reading uh, Joel 2, 13. Rend your hearts, God says, not your garments. Verse 15, blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Proclaim a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Hallelujah. Friends, I want to tell you something. That's the kind of days we're living in right now. I see that in the church right now. Last week, I just got back from the battle for Canada in Kelowna. If you weren't there, oh man, did you ever miss it? Miss a, a, an epic moment in, in church history for Canada. There's still another battle coming up uh, in, a, in a couple more months. I hope that you'll be at the next one uh, in Winnipeg. But, uh, but I can see the people, the 
People's hearts of Canada are turning. People are repenting. They're fasting and praying and seeking God's face. And I believe that this is a Joel 2.25 moment. If you're part of that, that generation that's saying, I'm done with my old ways. I'm done living a mediocre Christian, uh, Christian life. I am going to say yes to God. I'm turning from my sin. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going after God. I want to tell you, this Joel 2.25, is a word for you. He says, I will repay you for the years, the years those locusts have eaten. In other words, yeah, I've disciplined you, but friend, I am able to make up for lost time. He is able to get you to the destiny that he had in store. You say, man, I, I, and I tell you, I, friend, I know I have wasted years. If you've read my book, uh, Access Granted, chapter one, I tell this story. Everybody loves that one. It makes them laugh. It's a funny story. But chapter one, I tell the story of me drunk in the garage for five years, reading my Bible and praying, but living in total compromise. I know what it's like to waste years. Some have wasted decades of their lives and they figured they'll never get it back. I want to tell you something, friend, if you will give your whole heart to God, he says, I'll make up for those years. I'll get you to where I intended you to be. And so I encourage you, friend, this is not a time for you to just take a small leap forward. This is a time for you to die. This is a time for you to lay your life down. Get alone with God. Spend time seeking Him, praying, fasting. Uh, get alone with God. Maybe you need to take a weekend and disappear. Go to the mountains and just take your Bible. Climb a mountain and make some decisions. But this is a time for you to say yes to God. And as you do, and as many are across this nation, I meet people all all, the, all over the place right now who are finally saying yes in a, big, in a big way. What we are seeing right now is that this is a season for breakthrough. God is paying people back for the stuff they missed out on. We're seeing it in our health. We are absolutely seeing it in, in our finances. Huge breakthroughs financially. We're seeing it in salvation. Uh, I know for myself, there was years where I just wasn't really sharing my faith. I was just kind of, you know, just kind of keeping to myself. But I'll tell you something. We are coming into a season of harvest. And friends, we're going to win souls. We're going to change lives. We're going to see God healing the sick and doing wonders through these human hands of ours. Because God isn't looking for a big, strong guy to work through. He's looking for someone who's weak enough to work through. Someone who's broken enough. He's looking for a contrite heart. He's looking for a great, big, yes. Last verse, the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro, to and fro throughout the whole earth. What's he looking for? He's looking for someone whose heart is fully committed to him on whose behalf he can show himself strong. I hope that you will be one of those ones who says, God, look no further. I'm right here. Come fill me. And I promise you, he is able to make up for lost time. So don't beat yourself up any longer for past. Just say yes today and press into a bigger and greater destiny that the one that he created you for. I hope that was a blessing to you. Like it, share it. And if you haven't already, be sure to join the Oil Patch Pulpit community. It's the best way for you to get me to get all my stuff for you, to you for free. All you have to do is send me an email to feedback at oilpatchpulpit.com. By the way, if you're in business, if you own a business and you're a business leader, uh, make sure you mention that in the email because I want to also uh, put you on another little, uh, a shorter list uh, for uh, a group that, uh, that I am reaching out to in that way. God bless you. See you soon. <music>